Alrighty, been talking about this theme of what's in a name, about names. It's interesting, our last song we sang, it says, I will call upon your name. So I start out with a question this morning. Why is it so important we understand the princi spiritual principle of identifying with, connecting to, and the use of names? And I touched on this verse last week. I want to expand on it a little bit this morning. Mark 16, 17, this is God's words translation, says this, and these are the miraculous signs that will accompany believers. They will use the power and authority of my name to force demons out of people, to speak with new languages, and it continues, ending with, and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The point he's making here, when you use a name, it carries with it power, authority, character, identity, um, destiny, carries a lot with it. And I'm not sure we understand it because many times we use the name of Jesus, for example, as a tack on to the end of prayer because he says, anything you ask in my name, I'll do it. So we just figure we're going to tack it on everything. But I find it interesting, and we're going to do a little study this morning. I typically don't do that preaching. I want you to think, that's why I said earlier, engage your brain this morning. I want to ask you this question, why does God have so many names? He's got a bunch. I, I'm going to call out a few, but why? How many names you got? My name's Jim. And we got a last name that identifies us with a heritage and a family lineage. I got one. Why does God have so many? Because he had nothing else to do. He just decided he was going to have all these names. This is what I mean. I don't think we fully grasp, especially our Western culture, the implications and the power and authority behind a name. Some of the elites do. You know, we see these videos all the time every now and then when a cop stops somebody and he comes up to the window and they say, do you know who I am? What are they doing? They're invoking a name. But we don't get that because we, we have so diminished the power and authority behind a name that we only use it to identify the difference between each other, pretty much. And we don't understand the spiritual implication of names and why God gave himself so many names. So let me just go over some names of God. So let's do a quick little study. One name is Elohim, which means God, which is plural, as in the creator in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. That word is actually Elohim. El Elyon, which is God most high, found in Genesis 14, 18 to 20. El Roy, God who sees, Genesis 16, 13 and 14. El Shaddai, God Almighty, a God, the all-sufficient one. Genesis 17, 2 and 3. El Oleum, God who is eternal, all the everlasting God, Psalms 90, verse 2. Yahweh, the self-existent one, or I am who I am, in Exodus 3, 13 and 14. Then you have Adonai, Lord, Exodus 4, 10 through 12. Then you have all the Jehovah's or Yahweh also, depending on which term you want to use. I'll just say Jehovah because we're more familiar with that. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah will provide. My God will provide. I am will provide. In Genesis 22, 11 through 14. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah who heals, I am the God that healeth thee in Exodus 15, 26. Jehovah Nisi, God my banner, Exodus 17, 16. 
Jehovah Mid Kadesh. I can't even say that one. Mick, I'm not even going to try. All right, thank you. The God who sanctifies you. Exodus 31, 12. Jehovah Shalom. God is peace. In Judges 22, 24. Jehovah Shabbat. God of hosts. The hosts are the armies of angels who serve God. In Psalms 46, 7. Psalms 22, 10. Jehovah Ra, God is my shepherd, Psalms 23, 1. Jehovah Sid Canoe, Yahweh, our saving justice, Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, or the omniscient God, Psalms 139, 7. Jehovah Shuri, the Lord is our rock. Psalms 18.2. So again, why? Why so many names? We got to grasp this principle of names, the importance of names, the power behind names, the authority behind names. I believe if it's going to take us to the next level of seeing the power of God working in our lives. So we got to catch these couple revelations. I've already touched on these, so we're just going to hit them quick. The first one is this, what you name, you have influence and control over. Revelation 2, 17, New Living Translation. Right at the end, it says, I will give each one a white stone. White stone, right here, white stone. And on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. Again, I don't want to believe these points, but you have a new name written down in glory, which you need to identify with. Because again, your earthly name means nothing. It has no authority, it has no power, it has no nothing. It's an earthly name. In fact, what it does, it's more of a detriment to you because it ties you to a lineage, it ties you to generational problems, curses, heritage, lineage. That's why you see these certain things go on in your family. So again, you want to detach from that. And that, again, that's what baptism is about. You die to self and you come up a new creation in Christ with a new name. A new identity to function and manifest now the characteristics, characteristics of the lineage that you have. See, all those who are born again ought to be controlled and influenced by the indwelling Holy Spirit, who is God through the giving of a new name. Why do people struggle so much with the new name? I shouldn't say the new name. I can't hear from the Holy Spirit. I don't hear from him. I don't even know when he's around or whatever because you are still identifying yourself and walking around as a mere human being by your earthly given name. This is why this is so important. Do you understand in Roman times, even in Roman culture, when they adopted you, they wiped out everything of your past. And you started with a clean slate with a new name. When you became born again, you started with a clean slate and a new name. Why do you keep gravitating back to the old? Why do you keep identifying with the old? I don't give a flip what your folks said to you. I don't care what auntie so-and-so spoke over you. Why do you? Why do you? It is keeping you in bondage and in chains and walking in defeat, depression, anxiety, and poverty. We've got to really catch a hold of this. This is the problem that Christians walk in. They still hold on to the old and don't understand you have a new name.
So please understand this event. Revelation 2 has already occurred. You already have a new name. God sees the beginning from the end. God is outside of time, and as far as he's concerned, this has already happened. So we all have been given a new name by which we are to identify with and the Spirit uses to influence us. That's how you get influence. He's not going to influence Jim Gazowski when he walks under that identity, heritage, and lineage. That guy's dead. And he's been born and raised to newness of life. I have a new name. He's not calling the name Jim. That's why I don't hear him. He's calling the new name, which I need to identify with. And don't get all hung up then. What is it? What is it? What is it? Stop and say, Lord, I'm not going to function under the old anymore. I'm going to function under the new. You told me to put off the old man in Ephesians and put on the new man. I'm going to do that. I might not fully understand what that means. I might not fully understand how that works. But you know what, Lord? I want to do that. I want to put off the old so I can put on the new and function as you created me to be. But I want you to catch this revelation. God has never allowed mankind or anything else to name him. Do you know that? God has never allowed anyone else to name him. Why? Because if they did, then they'd have power and authority and control over him. He hasn't. He's always revealed his name to man. Man has never named him. And any time man has tried to name him, the different gods through mythology or whatever, no, they're all false, he says. Because no one gets to name him. Because his name is above every other name. He is supreme God, and there is none greater than him. And all must submit to him as he is God Almighty. So the th second thing we need to catch is this. And let me do this by asking you a question. When you pray or engage with God, what name do you use? What name do you use? Now, I want to try to make a point, and hopefully I can make it properly. I bounce it off my wife all the way in. Because the thing I don't want us to do is get religious with what I'm about to say and where I'm going with this this morning. I don't want to use religious incantations, as Christians tend to do, like just tacking the name of Jesus on everything. It's more of a mindset. What I want to do is change your mind, the way you think and what you focus upon. This is where I want to go with this. Where is my mind at and what am I focusing on as we kind of go down this road a little bit? So I've observed when people pray or go to engage God, I hear them use the term Father in the name of Jesus, sometimes Lord, so the first thing I want to do is remind you that Father is not a name. It's a title. It's not a name. It's a title. Because again, and, and Robin gave me a great illustration, when mom is at the playground, there's a whole bunch of moms and all their kids are playing in the playground, right? And moms are hanging out, and some little kid yells, Mom, what happens? They all look. All of them. Their name ain't mom. They're saying, okay, which one of those is mine? Or it's the same right now. If, if one of the kids came up and just yelled dad, all the dads would probably look. Because it's a title. But you know what? If someone walked in that door right now and yelled Jim, none of you would look. You're not Jim. I am. You'd probably look because you heard someone walk in. But you know what I mean. Because that's my name. It's not your name. So again, Father's a title. Is it really a name? I guess, and like I said, I don't want to get anal with this. I don't want to get overly, I don't know what word to use. I want us to get more of the concept in what I'm saying. Because knowing that names carry authority, power, and promises, why is it in prayer we only use the term Father, Lord, or Jesus when we pray. 
Why is that? Now think a minute where I'm going with this. Because in John 14, 13 and 14, this is a New Life version, it says this. Whenever you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So the shining greatness of the Father may be seen in the Son. Yes, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. No, we've turned that into, because of the concept and the way we think about names, we turn that into Jesus. So everything I'm going to ask is in the name of Jesus. I'm going to just talk about Jesus. But think about this a minute. The name Jesus had an identity, purpose, and destiny attached to it. Yeshua's destiny was to be the savior of the world. So once saved, we continue to call upon that name. Now there's nothing wrong with this. As I'm trying to make an important point about names, that they carry certain attributes with them. So if you want to access, if you want to access an attribute in a name, why don't we use that name? When was the last time you actually called upon the name of Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of Hosts? When was the last time you needed help, angelic help to come roaring in and you just said, Jesus, help? Jesus is Savior, you're saved. Now again, don't get anal with it, think. What do you need at the time? I need angelic hosts then why didn't you call on the name of the God of hosts? See where I'm going with this? Now again, don't get anal with it because I'm going to bring you to a place why. Or when was the last time you called on Jehovah Rapha? When was the last time you called on Jehovah Jireh? For example, if you need healing, we say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Okay. He's Savior. Is he healer? Sure. But you know what? Why don't you call on the name Jehovah Rapha? Because when he says, My, God has many names. I'm going to get down that road, babe, because it's coming to me. When the Bible says God is light, what do you think of? Just let's use the sun, for example. When we say light, you look at the sun, you think light, right? Do you understand that's broken up into various waves, which are various frequencies? Alpha, gamma, all these things. I don't know which one they say give you skin cancer. I don't think anything causes detriment. God is light, and I don't think he put anything negative in the light. But, you know, you need to be careful. Anything you overdo can cause you an issue, okay? So there's certain rays of the sun, frequencies, that are for specific things, aren't they? It's the same with the names of God. You're calling on the light, but you don't need the light. You need a part of the light for a part of an issue that you're dealing with. In each of his names, the rest of Each of the names has a promise attached to it, an attribute attached to it, an authority attached to it. So why are we not using, when we need healing, Jehovah Rapha? Or same with Jehovah Jireh, when you have a need of a provision. Why aren't you being specific and honing it down to the place where I'm going to call upon that name? Yes, you have many names, and you gave me those many names so I can understand that that name meets that need, and that's what I want to identify with and think about. Is this making sense? Say an example that, you know, you're on the way to the doctor, you have a physical need, you have a doctor, and you've got to make a couple stops. You've got to go to the ATM, get some money, you've got to go get some gas, and then you're going to go to the doctor. Right? When you go to the ATM to get some money, you're not thinking about your need. You're thinking about this need. I've got to get some money. Right? So where your focus is, is I need to get some money. Then you stop at the gas station. I need to get some gas. 
Then you go to the doctor. I need now. I'm going to listen to him and see what's going on. This is where I'm trying to go. Where are you focusing your thoughts, your actions, and your own strength at the time? When you need healing, you don't need a savior. You don't need one that's going to bring provision. You need the God of Exodus 13. It says, I am the God that healeth thee. Call upon his name. Call upon that name. And when you do, again, it's not some magic formula. That's not what I'm trying to bring across this morning. What I'm trying to get across is that will then focus your mind. Position you in the place that, yes, Lord, I'm going to you for this specific thing. Because we've gotten lazy and just use the name of Jesus for everything. Or we just use the word Father for everything. What's in a name? This power, authority, provision, attributes, character, integrity. There's a lot in a name. That's why he gave us all these various names. You don't go to the doctor when you need money. You don't go to the doctor when you need gas in your car. So why do we do that when we go to God and we just use the word Father or Jesus? I will call upon your name, the name I need right now. I will praise you right now by your name. But because we are so ignorant of names, especially in the Western culture, the meaning behind names, and especially spiritually, the ignorance of the spiritual principle of names, and renaming. That's why I told you, beware of the Christian nationalist stuff. They're trying to rename Christians. Told you last week about women's health care. No, abortion is not women's health care. It is the death of a destiny of a human being. It's not health care. The devil knows well what naming does. Yet we're ignorant of the devil's devices and we're ignorant of the power that Jesus left us. Because we got in our head, in his name we'll do everything. He'll do anything for us, but names only mean to us that name. So I want to share with you another name. That name is Abraham. And I touched on this before, talking about the blessing of Abraham. And in Galatians 3.14, because again, remember, once you identify and connect to a name, you now are able to partake of or access the power, authority, everything that comes along with that name. You now have access to that. So in Genesis 3.14, New King James Version, it says, this, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The voice translation puts it this way. This is what God had in mind all along. The blessing he gave to Abraham might extend to all nations. Uh, he said to the Gentiles, through the anointed one, Jesus. And we are the benefactories of this promise of the Spirit that comes only through faith. So that means you've got to believe. I think a key we miss in this is we have access to all things in the Spirit through Jesus. This is an important scripture to get a hold of here in, in Romans 8, 16 and 17. Because, all right, I'll wait till I get to that place. How many of you want blessing? I want blessing. How many are walking in blessing? No, many are walking in need. Well, he says, look it, I'm going to bless you with the blessing of Abraham. 
And I'm going to read the blessing of Abraham in a minute, but it's not so much you're going to be taken care of, but you're going to have so much that you're going to be able to bless others. How many of you are doing all that? That we're able to bless others to the extent that we can really bless them. When was the last time you paid off someone's mortgage? Bless somebody. Not saying you just gave them 20 bucks to help them get gas. No, bless them. I want to be in that. I want to be able to go through that. Can I tell you a little secret? I'm going to get ahead of myself. Your lineage ain't blessed. It's cursed under the law. Gazowski's not blessed. Gazowski is trying to bless others, but Gazowski ain't blessed. The new name is blessed. Gazowski died. Need to die. Go in the grave. Raised to newness of life. Walk under a new name and a new identity and a new purpose that carries with it power and authority and blessing that that one didn't. Are you understanding that piece? It's the same with you. Because over here, we didn't have any. Over here, there's no power and authority or anything. Jim Gazowski cannot lay hands on the sick and see him recover. Jim Gazowski can't bless anybody. Jim Gazowski's in need. But people over here keep running in that proverbial hamster wheel, trying to think if I just work harder and do more, then I'll make it. No, you won't. Die to self. Bury that old man and raise to newness of life and put on the new man. Romans 8, 16 and 17 says this, for the Holy Spirit speaks to us and tells our spirit that we are children of God. So the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are a child of God. If you wonder if you're born again, if you're a child of God, then you ain't. Because he bears witness. And he's not in you because he's the one that regenerates you to become a child of God, and then he comes in and dwells in you to testify to you that you are now born again. Verse 17, and if we are children of God, we will receive everything he has promised us. So if we're children of God, we're going to receive everything he promised us. How will we do that? We will share with Christ. We will share with Christ. All the things God has given to him, we're going to share with him. All the things he's given to him. But we must share his suffering if we had to share in his shining goodness. Everything we receive in the Spirit is through Christ. Every benefit is through Christ. Nothing outside of Christ. So every time you're trying to work for something, every time you're trying to get ahead, every time you are trying to do something, it will not work. It is through Christ. You cannot continue to function in your own identity and think you'll be blessed. Uh, is this happening? Are you getting it? Because it's through Christ. Okay? Now we are partakers of the blessing of Abraham through Christ. Now catch this, I find this verse amazing that people you use this to deny you and I the blessings of Abraham. It's amazing. In Galatians 3.16, this is a New Living Translation, says this, God gave the promise to Abraham and his child. So people say, oh no, this was just for Abraham. Wait a minute, I will bless all the nations through you. I will bless all the Gentiles through you. All the families of the earth will be blessed as we're going to read in a minute. Why do people not want us to prosper? I, I, I really don't get it. There's probably a preacher in the pulpit right now telling you, telling somebody it's a blessing to be poor. Broke, busted, and disgusted. I don't understand that. It says, and notice that the scriptures doesn't say to his children 
This is what they're saying. It's not children as if it meant many descendants. Rather, it says to his child, and that, of course, means Christ. Yes, it does. Absolutely. But guess what I have in Christ? I share in every blessing he has. So if it's for Christ, it's for me. And it's for you. It's amazing they try to use this verse to deny us the blessings of Abraham. When verse 29, you just go down a few verses. What verse did I just read? 16. Now you jump down to verse 29 in the same chapter of Galatians 3. Verse 29 says this. This is a New Living Translation. And now that you belong to Christ, okay, now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. I'm a child of Abraham. You are his heir, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. So how do I not get it? The blessing of Abraham belongs to you and to me. So how are we to receive that? Now notice, I want to read it to you. In case it's been a while since you read it, it's in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the New Living Translation says this. And the Lord said to Abram, notice it doesn't say Abraham, it says Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. We, as children of Abraham, are supposed to be blessed and be a blessing to everyone else. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Other people should not be a blessing to us that way and meet our needs. We're supposed to be the ones that meet their needs. How does that happen? I got a couple points there, but I'm just feeling I want to look at that verse itself. It says, he said to Abram, you know the first thing he did? Changed his name, didn't he? Changed his name to Abraham. Why? Because names have meanings, identity, purpose, and destiny attached to them. That's why I keep telling you what's in a name. You've got to change your name. There's a new name that you have. I don't care. Go after it if you want and figure it out. I don't care. All I know is I can't function under the old name. Is that making sense? If I try to walk and function under my earthly given name, I am not going to walk under the blessing of Abraham because I will be identified with that family lineage. So again, you need to identify with the name. That's why Jesus said, all power and authority is given to me in my name. Okay, power and authority is all that, but where's the blessing? We did it say we were going to get blessed under his name. He just told us here, this is the lineage of blessing, earthly blessing upon this earth. Now I know I'm probably tweaking you, I'm probably saying things you may never have heard before, but it's right here. So the first thing we've got to understand is we have to identify with a new name because the old name ain't going to cut it. You getting that? The Sunday school song explained it pretty easy. Exactly. I mentioned that a few weeks back. Father Abraham had many sons. I'm not going to sing it because we'll have to cut this out. But many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you. Why do we teach the kids that? It's just a cute song? It has no spiritual meaning or biblical truth? No, it's right here. But then the next thing he said is, leave your native country, your relatives, 
and your father's family. Break away from the heritage. Break away from your lineage. Break away from where you used to be. Stop thinking you can make it there. Stop the mindset. Because that lineage and that upbringing created a mindset. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to renew your mind. Because over there, you're not going to make it. You're not going to walk in this. You're going to walk in what you can create on your own. And then he says, go to a land that I'll show you. He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. See, and all the naysayers want to say, oh yeah, that was for Abraham, not you. No, 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 I have it in Christ. I have a heritage through Christ. I have a spiritual heritage that he told me because of his name, I have power and authority. I have an earthly heritage through Abraham. For what? Blessing and prosperity. Does it come in Christ? Yes. I guess the, the difference I'm trying to make is, how many times have you prayed in the name of Jesus and nothing has happened that way? Because you're still holding on to your old lineage, your old name, your old ways of doing things, and you're trying to tack on some spiritual principle, some religious witchcraft in the name of Jesus, thinking it's going to turn everything around for you. But you've not changed your identity. You've not put off the old man and put on the new, as it says in Ephesians. This is what I'm talking about. you got to leave. I'm not talking about physically here. Leave here. Leave it. Put on the new man. I'm a child of Abraham. And with that, I get all the blessings. Because he says it's for the Gentiles. I'm a Gentile. Earthly blessings come through the lineage of Abraham. He said it. I will bless those that bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. Why are you cursing others? God will handle it. Be still and know I'm Lord. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Okay, Lord of Sabaoth, send your angels and put them in disarray, like it said in what? Psalms 50, what was it? I forget the psalm I read the other time. Okay, Lord of Sabaoth, send them. May the torment they place on me go back upon them. But again, we like to use in Jesus' name. No, I'm going to call on the Lord of hosts because that's the one I want to engage with because that's what I need at the time. Just making sense? Again, it's not some religious incantation, a Christian spell. I'm talking about a mindset. If I need the police because someone's breaking in my house, I'm not calling the fire department. Does that make sense? I'm not calling my financial advisor. I'm calling on the one I need at the time. Why don't we do that with God? This is what I'm trying to get to. Why have we made everything generic when it comes to God? No, I'm going to bless those who bless you. That's why we can bless those who despitefully use us because I know I'm already blessed. I'm not going to get blessed by them. Bless those that despitefully use you because I'm already blessed. I want them blessed because this is for everyone. Anyone who's in Christ can walk in this. That all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. If I'm supposed to bless everyone, that's how I can bless those that despitefully use you. Use me. He just told me to bless them. So let me think, see what I wrote here. Leave your old earthly identity, purpose, and destiny behind. Identify with your new earthly identity being a child of Abraham. Now this is done by adjusting and renewing your mind by the Holy Spirit. 
again, it's a mental thing. Again, it's a mindset thing. Earthly blessings flow from your identity with the family of Abraham. Not your earthly identity. Identifying with Abraham. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And if you'll accept your new spiritual identity, you will embrace... If you will embrace your earth, new earthly heritage, if you will call upon the name of the Lord for the thing you're looking for in your life, you'll experience a radical change if you endure. So I hope this is making sense. Now, there's some things I want to look up and, and I want to check. I don't know if Jesus ever identified himself with the family of Abraham, I'm not sure. He was obviously identified as son of David. He was from the tribe of David. But I don't know, some of y'all that know the Old Testament better than me, you can... And the other thing I'm not sure, Jesse may know this, he can tell us later. But you know when the high priest in the temple went to minister in the temple, you do understand this, I hope that the temple veil had no crease in it. He had to walk through it. Okay, walk through. 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 Through it. Didn't have no door, didn't have no seam. He couldn't go under, he couldn't go over. That's why it said the temple veil was rent from top to bottom when Christ rose from the dead, so that there was access. They estimate about 700 pounds. Mm-hmm. Four feet thick, if I recall. How'd he get through it? Would I think, this might be legend, I'm not sure, but the high priest would sing the names of God. And as he began to sing the names of God, he would vibrate at those frequencies and be able to come one with that and be able to walk through into the other side. Not only that, he still had to come out. Now they had a rope on his leg. I don't know how they're going to drag him out. He died in there. That's why the names of God are so important. You want to resonate with the name. If you need healing in the body, you want to resonate with Jehovah Rapha. You want to resonate with that so healing may come into your body. Because again, even though I'm going to, let's backtrack, even though I'm going to identify as a son of Abraham, that blessing only comes through Christ, which also comes through the name of Jehovah Jireh, my God will provide. It's still all connected. I don't get it just because I say I'm a son of a Abraham. I've got to understand that's still connected through Christ because everything promised to Christ can be mine. I'm a joint heir with him. And he got it from being God. But there's a particular name he identifies with. That's why he was called Savior at the time. He was also called Emmanuel, which is God with us at the time. He was here. A blind man called him son of David and he got his sight back. The Pharisees, when they were arguing with Jesus in John chapter 8, they said, hey, we're children of Abraham. They got it. Jesus said, if you were, you'd know who I am. You don't do the works your father Abraham did. He was looking for my day because he knew who he was. Exactly. Because he was justified by faith because he believed. It's all by faith. I hope I'm making the connections for you. And again, do not turn it into some religious incantation. It's a mindset. Lord, I'm in need right here of this. What I'm trying to help you do is break away from this Father Blah, 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 in Jesus' name. Because you know why? It ain't been working. It ain't been working. 
No, Lord, Je- Lord is Adonai, Jehovah Rapha. I need healing in my body. You are the God that heals. I look to you, the God who heals. And through Jesus, because that's how I have access to the God that heals, I thank you and praise you that I have healing in my body. That nothing negative can reside in my body. Or whatever you want to say, but what am I saying? I am now focusing on healing the particular need because I'm talking to the heavenly doctor to put it in earthly terms. I'm not at the bank and I'm not at the gas station. I am focused on where I am and what I need. It's not just in the generic name of Jesus, but his name is above every name. I'm not saying that's not wrong to do. But I'm saying maybe if we got a little bit more specific Again, not as a procedural thing, but as a mental thing, as a change of thought and process. Spiritual protocol where we actually go to the name because there's power in the name and we only think there's one name. No, he has many names because he can provide many things. Go to the name of the thing you need. You need provision. Go to Jehovah Jireh and share with him your need. Because you have access through Jesus. I get it. I'm trying to break it down in pieces so we in our humanity and our mental comprehension can better understand it. But God is one. But again, we still can't comprehend that. All I know is on earth, if we need something, we go to that particular name, doctor, gas, bank. That's all I'm trying to say. If you need a particular thing, go to Rafa, go to Jaira, go to Elohim, go to same God, same sun, just go to that particular wave that you need of the sun at that time. Does that make sense? Because I'm really trying to explain it in a way you get it because I don't want you to misunderstand. I don't want you to turn it into this weird religious thing like some churches won't even use the name of Jesus anymore. Everything's Yeshua. No, don't do that. I'm talking about you and your personal time to help you get focused and tuned into that particular area of need that you are seeking. Instead of just throwing out the name of Jesus or just throwing out Father, or just throwing out whatever you throw out. No, Lord, I need this. And that name that you have provides this, so I'm going to call upon your name for that need that I have at this particular time, and I'm going to believe the power and authority in that name will provide what that name says it will provide. Does that make sense? He wants us to believe in the power that he revealed that he says in that name. My favorite is in general, Rashama. Mm-hmm. Omniscient one. Omniscient one, yep. Before I start to pray, I'm reminded he's already there. Exactly. And that's the point I'm trying to make. It reminds you that he's there. Instead of just generically throwing out something. That's what I mean. This is personal. Thank you for that. Reminds you. Focuses you. To be intentional. For that particular thing. So Father, thank you for this time. We thank you for the name. I thank you that we are truly children of Abraham. And we are blessed. And we can walk in blessing. We can experience his blessing. The same as we said, Lord, remind us of the heritage of blessing that you blessed this earth with through Abraham. 
all the families of the earth will be blessed. Help us to make that connection and understanding that we are of the lineage of Abraham through Christ. That we can be blessed. And that we can have provision. And not only that, we can have more than enough where we are able to bless others because it was through Abraham that all the world will be blessed. Father, I know it's a big mindset shift. But bring revelation by your spirit today into this place. Those that are going to watch this later, maybe we all need to watch this again later. But Lord, we need to get a hold of this because it is... To be carnally minded is death, and that's how we function. We function with a carnal mind, a carnal identity, and a carnal purpose, and we don't even know it because we do it so much. It's just ingrained within us. We do it without even thinking. Lord, refocus us. Retweak the thinker, however all that works, to the place that, no, I'm a child of Abraham, and I am blessed. I am a son of the living God through Jesus and I have access to every one of these names and what each of those names have attributes for. And may it re... I don't know what the word I'm looking for, Lord, but in our prayer time, refocus us that now you really become personal with us because we're going to adapt this that we're going to make it real personal. That we call on the personal name, not the generic name like father. Like we said, if someone walked in and said, dad, all the dads would look. A mom, all the moms would look. May we not be generic anymore, but be specific and get to know that name and the power that that name carries. Oh, we love you and worship you and praise you. We thank you for this time. May we walk out of here encouraged, blessed, knowing that we walk under the blessing of Abraham. And no one can take that away, Lord, because you gave it to us through Christ. Lord, you are so awesome and great. Our earthly words cannot express the gratitude we have in our heart for what you've done for us, even reflecting on Easter, providing us a way to be reconciled with you, and then you giving us provisions and taking care of us and all that as your child. Help us to understand these protocols that we may truly walk in them and see them manifested in our lives and encourage others to do the same. We honor and worship you now in the name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.